Hey, hey, hey. So I've been asked to talk about forensic pathology. And this is just going to give you a bit of a history lesson because I am not a forensic pathologist, but a forensic scientist. So hopefully we'll get a forensic pathologist to come and chat live with us. But right now, here is just a overview. So when there is an unexpected death, there's usually a post-mortem. Now this is to determine the cause of death. And that's where a pathologist comes in. They'll usually determine the cause of death. It's generally medical and if it does not constitute foul play. But sometimes deeper examination is needed and a forensic pathologist will be brought in. Now here in the UK, there are about 40 forensic pathologists and they use an array of tools and techniques to figure out entrance and exit wounds, angles of bullets or knives, whether someone has been poisoned, overdosed, someone has been murdered, whether they've committed suicide, a whole host of things. And also they use DNA as well to figure out what happened and what went on. Here's this little bit of history lesson. So in ancient Egypt, Imhotep was one of the first recorded experts. Yes, that same guy that's in the mummy movies, but he was a little less sorcerer and more personal physician to the Pharaoh. And I'm not sure if there are any Medi protecting his tomb. Anyway, Egypt was known for its post-mortem examinations and trials. Now fast forward, the first noted forensic pathology examination was after the death of Julius Caesar. The examiner there concluded that of the 23 stab wounds found in his body, only one was fatal. Whoever dealt that was never discovered, no matter what Shakespeare tries to infer. Now, I have mentioned this impressive scientist, Song Chi, before in my chat about fingerprinting. Now, this legend is the father of forensic medicine and wrote a whole book which listed his experiments, including measuring knife wounds and angles. Back in the day, every kingdom had its own way of dealing with criminals and even what constituted an actual crime. Some people had trials, others not so much, a lot of uh, behind the scenes killing. But in 1507, the Constitutio Criminales Carolina, or Carolina, was written, which tried to set up criminal law. It said that murder, manslaughter, robbery, arson, homosexual relations and witchcraft were henceforth defined as severe crimes. Now, trials became more prevalent and medical testimony, including the manner of death, was then considered. And it was during the 19th century that pathology became an integral part of medicine. Now, things kind of developed at their own pace, but in the 1900s, in the UK especially, the Forensic Five really pushed the envelope. Sir Bernard Spilsbury, Sir Sidney Smith, Professors John Glaister, Francis Camps and Keith Simpson, between them, they did 200 thousand autopsies and established crucial elements of murder investigation such as time, place and cause of death, methods that are still used today. Some of the cases they were involved in made headline news and Spilsbury was even named the Sherlock Holmes of the Times for his controversial but innovative techniques. He was also the man that ensured that all officers wore protective clothing and thought about how to protect evidence. He introduced the murder bag which had gloves, tape and sample bags, amongst other things, and was used by officers until the role of the crime scene examiner came into play. Now again, in the UK, each case is different and a forensic pathologist isn't always called in, but they can offer evidence at court, even if they didn't complete the autopsy themselves. They are expert witnesses. Hopefully we will get a forensic pathologist on the show. If you know anybody, then give them my number. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe.